Hey guys, it's Michael Todd, and welcome to the Cult of Vintage. You guys, it's plain antiques day. Let's get inside. Alrighty guys, here we are on the interior. I gotta say, Plains Antiques, Home Furnishings and more, is probably one of my most favorite places. There is just such a wide variety of different items to choose from. Obviously, we have what I believe are approximately three vendors here immediately when you walk into the door. It does open up into a larger area and it does continue on to the back as well as off to the right. And there is a second floor uh, here. Of course, you're seeing a vendor more towards the middle of the store. A lot of furniture set up again, great displays, wide variety of items. Um, I definitely recommend checking it out. There is something for everybody and there are their hours. They are open Thursday through Saturday until five. Um, great time, you guys. So we are back here at the beginning and we're going to kind of check some things out. We're going to do a quick overview. We've got some jewelry. We've got some babies set up here. Um, I am a big fan of having the smalls in the cabinets like this. I don't know why. Um, I just love how it looks, the displayability of it all. The displayability, is that a word? We're going to go with it. <laughs> oh my goodness. We do have some ephemera there. I will say I checked it out. There was nothing overly too exciting. Uh, it, it really doesn't matter the publication at the end of the day. What does matter is the contents, specifically any kind of advertisements maybe that you are looking for. And heading over here across the way, of course, we've got some Pyrex here in the butter print um, that looks to be Fire King with the ivy pattern there. Some great pinups, this wonderful Zenith radio. Now this of course was fully functional. It was playing, um, love the retro vibes to it. Again, there are those framed pinups. Those are quite desirable. I would definitely recommend keeping my eye out for those. This place is top to bottom folks. Um, it's, like I said, it's just a great place to be. I love it. A little bit more of the primitive or the rustic vibe. It's very popular in central Pennsylvania. Um, again, important to know, especially if you are going to be a vendor in the mall, to know your region and know your market. Across the way here, again, it's a little bit more of the rustic primitive, if you will. Um, a lot of homes um, that are native to the area, or not necessarily native, but were built in the 1800s, so they do uh, lend themselves well more to a rustic, I like to call it a colonial, <laughs> a colonial vibe. Not really my thing, but again, it is important to know who you're selling to. Um, and this vendor knew that they were speaking to me, this crazy chalkware pig. He was in really good condition. Um, he was priced at $32. I think it is very reasonable for a collector. I love these aluminum um, canisters here. Those were newer. Uh, however, it does look like they stenciled on um, the name of the products to go inside. We've got some great Georges Briard. I do believe that casserole dish there. I love the conduit covers there turned into small lamps. Again, about thinking outside of the box. We've got some smalls in here, loving the color scheme of everything. This adorable little hand puppet here. Uh, he looks very um, Knickerbocker to me. He's reminding me they did do a line that they re collectors lovingly refer to as Daniel the Tiger. Uh, looks like he could be a sibling there. We do have a child's quilt poking out down here. It is hand embroidered. There were some condition issues on it, though it was priced exceptionally fair. Uh, perfect for somebody to do some small mending on. 
Now we are headed into the second portion of the mall. Um, there obviously are quite a few cases that you are going to see here. Again, we have a wide variety of items. We've got mid-century, we've got antiques, um, we've got a little bit of the modern collectibles, retro toys are thrown into here too. Again, like I said earlier, there really truly is something for everybody. Staff is very quick to help you should you see anything in the display case. Um, thankfully, the uh, cashier stand is not too far away. Here, of course, we've got some beautiful vanity items um, and that Ormolu, love it. It's not gonna be the last that we see of the Art Nouveau style. Now in today's video, we are going perhaps maybe a little bit faster than normal. Um, we have come down to the end and we're walking back up the display cabinets. Um, again, I kind of want to give you guys more of a better feel of the antique mall so that you can judge for yourself if this is a location that you would like to, to visit. Again, we are at Plains Antiques in Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania. I would definitely recommend checking it out. We've got some framing here. Um, I think that there are so many um, content creators that do a fantastic job um, in regards to speaking to resellers. Um, and while, yes, in fact, as you many of you know, I do resell, I do consider myself more of a collector that does happen to resell. That said, I really do want to focus more on the businesses, the items, and the vast array of items that they are carrying. For instance, um, I always, whenever I see the Inesco winking kitty here in the yellow, um, I think, of course, of Enamor Amy. Um, love the beautiful Fenton coin dot vase up here. Just recently sold one. Um, um, mine was a little bit taller. Again, here we're looking at a vast array of items. We've got some contemporary items thrown in there, that red um, satin glass that's actually a Versace bottle stopper. Um, I loved this glass turtle paperweight. We do end up picking him up. Uh, the vendor was having a 20% off sale. That is also something um, that I will say that a number of uh, vendors do have sales throughout the mall. And then I spot this Victorian cranberry glass hanging basket. It, of course, does have, I call it the thorny rose pattern to it um, on that clear glass stand. It was priced at $100. It was 20% off. I did, in fact, pick that piece up. I will say, um, again, some beautiful um, so sterling plate. Uh, again, in the Art Nouveau with a little bit of brass sprinkled in there. Um, the Thorny Rose, whenever you are looking at Victorian era glass, do look for a little bit of a yellow hue to it. The stand, in fact, does fluoresce. We've got some Murano glass. I was intrigued by that bird. Um, I thought he was beautiful. These adorable little Holt Howard, the blue ceramic bird candle huggers. Um, they were priced at $48, which is unfortunately for me as a reseller. I didn't want to pick those up at that cost, though I will say, given how unique they are, $48 certainly um, I think is fair. I've never seen those before, either in real life or in doing a variety of Holt Howard um, online searches, searches, specifically through eBay. Now we are walking into the what we'll refer to as the third part of the vendor mall. Again, we have a variety of items um, from furnishings, that is part of the title, as well as a variety of different decor items. Love the little Art Nouveau figurine up here or statue. I guess he's a little bit taller than a figurine. <laughs> A few salt and pepper shakers that are sprinkled in throughout the mall. I will say that I was, I'm was i kind of surprised that there aren't more salt and pepper shakers. Um, there are a number of vendors who, who do specialize, um, well, I shouldn't say specialize, that do have a variety of salt and pepper shakers, about three or four. So again, we're kind of giving you an overview. So again, you can see the breadth of the store. Um, I love these giant Anna Lee rabbits down here. They are large and in charge folks. Uh, we do have some vintage fur in here. 
Um, this vendor has elected to keep up some Christmas throughout the year. You know we greatly appreciate that. I think a lot of you certainly can appreciate that. Um, just because it's not, you know, November or December, I think people do look for vintage Christmas throughout the year, and I think it's a smart decision. You can even find bearskin rugs here, folks. He is, of course, vintage. Again, as I said earlier, there are a number of vendors who are having sales, 50% uh, off. We've got a lot of uh, depression glass here, both pink, green, a little bit of yellow. I do believe the yellow is federal glass, the mixing bowls there. Um, we've got some Hall Superior. Again, we've got some um, modern retro toys there with like the Hess trucks. Don't you remember that as a child? It was just the place to go. I don't even know if there are Hess gas stations still around. I loved the little graphics on the children's records here. Those were adorable. We've got some little items popping in. Again, a sale is always going to catch, I think, most people's eyes. Whether you are a reseller or whether you are a collector, we all like to try to save as many dollars as we can. Again, I told you we were going to see some more Art Nouveau. We do have the two perfume bottles. They were priced at $80 for the set, uh, again, with 20% off. So we do pick up, yes, we do, in fact, pick up both of those perfume bottles. I think that they are beautiful. There is some damage to the one stopper. Uh, I've decided to keep that one and sell the other. I actually do not own any of the Victorian vanity sets or pieces individually. Um, so I thought, you know what? This one's damaged. Why not? I do see a lot of value um, in those pieces. I think, again, as a reseller, that certainly was there. But also as a collector, I think that that was a tremendous deal. Again, we are looking at another vendor that has a sale that's 50% off here to the right. We are going to head up the stairs here. I love this wrought iron um, trellis that they have set up. I think it's adorable. It just adds to the overall ambiance. And of course, they did some dried, uh, I was going to, twigs. I don't know what those are called, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Uh, again, it's very period correct for the market. You know, you've got some rusty advertisements here. I love the old tin uh, truck there. You've got some vintage, could be antique taxidermy here. Um, I know that it might not necessarily be everybody's aesthetic, especially in other parts of the country. However, we, uh, we're in rural central Pennsylvania. Um, so it, it just lends itself well, unless of course it's in a completely new remodeled home which is a shame because some of the houses in the area are absolutely stunning and beautiful. The woodwork, um, you know, the cost of having to do some of those things in some of those um, Victorian era homes, it, it's a shame to kind of see them torn out, painted over, or just completely discarded. Don't worry, that's actually a mannequin. We're not creeping on a real person. <laughs> I loved, I believe it is a mosque. Um, there is one in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. And I was like, is that a miniature version of that? Um, it, it's very similar. I don't know that I would call it exact. Again, we're going to find both furniture, large pieces. We're going to find some small accent pieces and uh, a lot of collectibles. We're even going to find some linens. I found this beautiful example of a chenille blanket. It's in excellent condition. I am loving the fact that there is no cotton backing that is showing. It's like full chenille, no stains, no tears, a little bit of yellowing with some age, though I do think appropriately treated. That is certainly going to lift right out. So we do go ahead and pick that up. We obviously are heading up now to the second floor. Again, you're going to see some very high end. We do see a Chinese lacquered uh, dividing screen there. You're going to find a pottery. You're going to find mid-century glass up here. Again, you're seeing some furniture and some accent pieces that you could certainly put into the home. Um, here we've got a beautiful Roseville. I love the colorway on this. This does appear to be part of the console set. Um, I do know that they did make matching flower frogs. Uh, to go inside of those console sets. We are seeing some more chenille. Unfortunately, the blue one in particular was a twin size. Um, 
and it was priced more than what I would need it to be because I wouldn't be collecting that piece. Love this Roseville Freesia. Love that dark green ombre into that lighter green. There's just something about that color combination. Here we are seeing a vendor um, that obviously is focusing on the mid-century. The beautiful Ellie Smith here. Doesn't that just absolutely sparkle in the light? Imagine that in a windowsill or again in the evening backlit um, with your ceramic twig. What is that? driftwood <laughs> lamp uh, it does have a matching planter to it i'm unsure that i i'm going to be truthful i don't know that i really like that lampshade i think that the form is a bit too abstract for me i can certainly understand their want or desire to kind of mimic the driftwood effect um i just think that it, maybe if it was a little bit more controlled i could appreciate it a little bit more it looked like it was stained um, it wasn't, it was manufacturer, but it was odd choice to me. Of course, we are seeing some Lucite candle holders there. They were unfortunately missing um, their candles. I do believe that was a DIY kit, much like the grapes. You would buy that and assemble them yourselves. Again, gorgeous hutch here filled with lots of beautiful Roosevelt pottery. Um, lots of freesia. Up top, we are seeing a francoma. This is, in fact, a decanter. I think it's a gorgeous statement piece. Um, the knob on the top is, in fact, um, the lid to it. We do go ahead and pick that up. I think it is unusual. I know many of you out there do love the mid-century style, so we most certainly pick that up. Beautiful display cabinet. Absolutely love uh, the top piece. Unfortunately, if you look at the back, you're getting a better view, the reflection of the glaze. I thought it was unusual. It was striking. Um, definitely wanted to feature that. Again, not necessarily we would need it to be for resale, and that's totally fine. Lots of beautiful glass here. We've got a cobalt cut to clear. Um, I The name of these are escaping me. I do know they are quite desirable. I believe they also did a cranberry version of this. All right, guys, this is the last booth that we are going to be in. The vendor has a variety of both more modern, vintage, and antique goods. Uh, speaking of antique goods, we've got the cranberry souvenir pieces. And the last item that we are going to get for the day is this gorgeous ruby red sugar and creamer set. Um, I do hold it up to the light here to make sure that it is not stained on. In other words, that the color has not been applied but no, in fact, it is true ruby red glass. This will, in fact, fluoresce. So guys, that is it. And we're going to wrap it up outside. See you there. Well, guys, there you have it. Another wonderful day at Plains Antiques. I'm super excited about this stuff that we have gotten. I hope that you enjoyed today's video. I know that content or I guess I should say editing wise is a little bit different. I am just trying to focus maybe more so on the items versus the reselling aspect. I know a lot of people who do watch the videos are more collectors than resellers and I really want to make sure that I am focusing on the business itself. <laughs> so anyhow guys until next time remember keep it rusty, crusty, and dusty. Bye, guys.